we're not. Okay, so let's start the meeting with uh, money the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, ben and Owen Laurie would like to lead us in the pledge. Okay, Ben and Owen Laurie are going to lead us in the pledge. They are here with the Boy Scouts to watch a public meeting. Go ahead, guys, whenever you're ready. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, before starting with public audience, I just want to acknowledge that Lisa is not going to be here this evening. Uh, she actually is participating in a ceremony uh, on behalf of an award that a town employee is receiving. I'll make reference to it later on in the first selectman's report. So with that said, do we have any people interested in a public audience? Joan, come on up. Thank you so much. Wait, don't do it until I get up. I won't. I won't chip you of one second. <laughs> Joan Co. 26 Whitcomb Drive. I would like to thank all the 6,358 voters that participated in the historic vote to have a professional town manager as the CEO of Simsbury. I would also like to thank the seven Charter Revision Commissioners for standing their ground under much pressure to vote for a precedent-setting charter with the town manager. Past first selectmen Peggy Shanks, Anita Millard, and Mary Glassman all publicly supported a town manager. Thanks also go to the four members of the Board of Selectmen who voted to forward the charter for a referendum vote. Thanks go to SCTV, who televised the Charter Revision Commissions and discussion on the referendum questions to educate the public. I would also like to thank the 100 residents who voted for me when I ran for first selectman with a platform of town manager. Now that we have a charter with a town manager, the selection of the right person for a town manager is paramount to the process. The town should look to the town manager's organization, ICMA, for qualified candidates to fill the position. We should have a selection committee including the town managers of Avon and Bloomfield. The town manager form of government for Simsbury has finally evolved into a positive vote after over 30 years. It is imperative that the selection process be devoid of political persuasion in favor of the most qualified and experienced person for the position. At the last Board of Selectmen meeting, there was discussion about renovating Eno Hall for additional services in the Senior Center. Now that this decision has been made, it is time to move SCTV from Eno Hall to the library basement. This move could create a community media center. This is no-brainer. It is available immediately. The entire infrastructure is in place and it will be an extension of the services offered in the library that has morphed into a community center. SCTV now occupies 1,600 square feet and the library has 2,900 square feet that could be shared space. While the town is moving forward on renovation of Eno Hall, it would be cost effective if all the changes were done at the same time. I would suggest that the Board of Selectmen change the public building committee, change the charge, the public committee to formulate a plan for this proposal. Although we were told that the police department did not have any grievances, which were one of the talking points to give chief and captain a 5% increase in salary, recently a grievance was filed by the police union. The issue was the computed uh, amount received in the pension when a police officer retires. The police commission denied the grievance and now the police union will once again go to arbitration to argue over the retiree's pension calculation. Absent wording for the exact computation, rightfully, the previous contract should take precedence. Why is there a need for arbitration at great cost to the town and the police union? I am very concerned about the reasoning behind the resignation of Bruce Elliott as an elected alternate to the zoning commission. It appears that Jamie Rabbit, town planner, has told the elected alternates that they can no longer participate in any discussions brought before the Zoning Commission. Why did we elect these people when they have no right to participate? Past practice has always been the elected alternates can participate in the discussion but could not vote. Why the change? Why dilute the process? It appears that over the years, the elected and appointed officials on the Land Use Commission have been given less authority, leading one to believe that the fast track is broken. The Design Review Committee with expert contributors was assigned to a lesser position, with many contributors resigning. 
If we expect professional people to volunteer for our land use boards and commissions, we should give them the authority to make decisions in the best interest of the town. With all this building in town that will lead to a bubble and bust, we should have more people reviewing our applications, not fewer. I would suggest that this letter of resignation be reviewed and policy changes be implemented. I would also like to report that Simsbury Farms once again has an eight paddle team. We practice on Tuesday mornings and play matches on Thursday morning. We could use more players if anyone is interested. And I would also like to report that I'm undefeated, winning my matches against Farmington Field Club and Hop Meadow Country Club. And all of my comments will be posted on Simsbury Patch Twitter at Joan Co. Newsfeed on Facebook and Simsbury Forum Topics. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Co. Anyone else would like to speak? <coughs> Uh, Robert Kalishman, and then we'll go to the back of the room. Robert Kalishman, Simsbury. I'd like to take this time to offer my, congr my congratulations to Donald Trump, the newly elected President of the United States, and uh, I uh, I feel a little badly about uh, Mr. Doan's loss. I feel that she's that the Republican Party in town here is being remiss in their duties, and uh, surely uh, in the events that she should have uh, walked away with the election. But I truly uh, convey my, uh, yes, my condolences to her because uh, she was a far, she was head and shoulders above who we have now. And that seems to be one of the difficulties that we have with the Republicans that sit on this board. In my opinion, you're here for your own self and grind, uh, for, for your own self uh, grandizement. That's all you're here for. You're here for what you can do for yourselves or your companies. And you're not doing anything to help anybody because certainly after two, two times out of the gate, you can't take the House of Representatives for your own party. People wouldn't go out and help this woman. You got to get. You got to get in. You just get out of the wagon and start pulling the wagon. And having said that, another thing that was brought to my attention this evening, Bruce Elliott. Bruce Elliott is a veteran. And I look at, and in addition to being a veteran, he's in. He was elected by the town of Simsbury. It's not an appointment. It's an election. And for you to sit here and this evening accept that appointment based on and based on and accept that resignation based on the appointed person that was appointed, that's an appointee, that's not an elected official. You have an appointee telling the elected people, you can't run your government, I'm going to run it for you. We don't need that kind of that help in Simsbury. The people elected this man, and you should stand. You should stand behind him, and straighten out whatever is coming out of that that zoning official. He's an appointee. Mr. Elliott is a an elected official. And let's see some metal finally. And uh, and in closing. I'd like to call your attention to the monument down here, which was accepted by the town to be maintained and looked after. And I'll leave you with the poem from World War I that the ending or the last stanzas read something to this. If ye break faith with us who die, we will not sleep in Flanders Field. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kalishman. Sure. <coughs> Next. Yep, please come on up, and then Mark, you can go. Okay. We just ask that you give your name and address. Thank yep. you. 
Rick Anderson, um, Woodhaven in Simsbury. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear about the SCTV thing. That's not why I'm here, but it is complementary to what I just wanted to call your attention to. I'm from Simsbury Theater Guild. Um, we are in the midst right now of a run of Beauty and the Beast. Um, it's a fantastic production. There's a lot of Beauty and the Beast renditions going on in the area, but you can't miss on this one. Uh, in all due respect to the seriousness of the order of the business of the evening, um, one of the things we would really like to have is support for the arts in this town, and Simsbury Theatre Guild is right in the thick of it right now. Fantastic music, fantastic dancing, excellent acting. I might know something about that part. <laughs> uh, and um, we're having uh, three performances this weekend, Saturday a double header on, at 2 o'clock and at 7.30, and on Sunday we close up at 2 o'clock again. Simsbury High School. Uh, tickets are at the door, plenty of room. Um, the high school is very large and, and it's a challenge for us to fill and uh, that's why we're kind of here to just promote and, and, and push uh, uh, people's attention to it. So uh, we thank you for your time and uh, hope you'll be there to see a great show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark? Hi, my name is Mark Orenstein from 82 Old Meadow Plain Road. And tonight I'm here on behalf of uh, Simsbury Community TV, a.k.a. SCTV. Uh, earlier this year, we received wonderful news from the Hartford Foundation for Giving. Uh, we had applied for a grant to, up, to come up to the modern world, to go digital, to go to high definition, to upgrade our video capabilities <coughs> for both the studio and for the main meeting room and for the Board of Ed meeting room upstairs. It was a $35,000 matching grant, so every dollar you give is matched by the Hartford Foundation for Giving. We've completed the upgrades to the studio. It's now high definition. It's in the digital age. Uh, lots of work and energy has gone into it, and it's working out great. The next step, Woody, if you can show one of these old security cameras <laughs> that we're using for video t here. Uh, is to replace the three cameras in this room with high def robotic video cameras. Same thing upstairs in the Board of Ed room, as well as upstairs all of the uh, monitoring equipment, recording equipment on that. So we're in the final stages of raising money. Remember, every dollar you give gets matched. So let's go ahead, let's meet our goal, let's raise the $35,000 and get these rooms upgraded as well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Mark, thank you very much. By the way, you can also donate on SimsburyTV.org. All right. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else in public audience would like to speak? With that said, let's move on to presentations. We have two presentations tonight. The first is recognition and a proclamation relative to National Bone Marrow Awareness Month. I'm going to ask Alan Brandt to come up and come up to the microphone. Alan, I don't know if you want to do just a very brief update on this uh, uh, yeah, before sure. we do the proclamation. Yeah, um, well, unfortunately, my son, who uh, was the one that was responsible for donating bone marrow to, uh, as it ultimately turned out, um, a 18-year-old boy in uh, York, Pennsylvania, who had leukemia. And uh, anyways, Dave, who was a resident of Simsbury, um, donated the bone marrow and uh, uh, it was to uh, Brandon Hoenadel, uh out of, like I said, York, Pennsylvania. And we had decided to use this uh, situation as a way to uh, bring attention to how easy it is for people to actually donate bone marrow, which is just, uh, well, Sean's done it, so, uh, you know, it's just a swab in, in your mouth and that's it, you send it off and you got a one in 500 chance of being selected. My son was fortunate enough to do that. Um, also, unfortunately, um, Brandon passed away like three weeks ago, so when we were doing this, uh, we, you know, we thought everything was going to be fine and uh, what uh, this really I think teaches us is that uh, every day that we wake up on this side of the grass is a blessing and uh, boy if there was anybody that showed the you know that that kind of sentiment 
was was Brandon the fact that you know he got another two and a half years of life and a shot to you know possibly make it um, as a result of the bone marrow registry so like I said we're just trying to promote the bone marrow and uh, you know for what it's worth it's uh, be the match dot uh, org so it's www dot be the match dot org and the people that they really try to target are people that are from um, 18 to 20 uh, 18 to 45 so thanks Al, I just before um, Sean reads a proclamation we all were just so impressed with the presentation that you and your son did Absolutely. previously um, are incredibly impressed with what he's done on behalf of the larger community really sorry to hear, hear about Brandon please let him know that we you know made a specific statement of appreciation for him tonight Thanks. We felt it yep. was appropriate for Sean to read the actual proclamation. Yeah, as a matter of so. fact, uh, Brandon's parents are coming uh, up to Simsbury uh, this weekend, so we're planning on giving, giving them the proclamation. Okay. So I've got a proclamation from the town of Simsbury. Whereas November 2016 marks the anniversary of the National Bone Marrow Awareness Month, and whereas Be The Match is an organization that has a mission of delivering cures for blood cancer patients by getting life-saving bone marrow from donors, and whereas in 2014, Simsbury High School graduate David Brandt donated <coughs> bone marrow after being notified by Be The Match that he was a match of, of, then, of a then anonymous patient in desperate need, and whereas the recipient was Brandon Hohenadel of uh, York, Pennsylvania, who in 2013 was diagnosed with AML leukemia in his senior year of high school, whereas in March of 2014, Brandon received David's bone marrow, and whereas this proclamation is being, is, is to bring more attention to Simsbury for Be The Match and Bone Marrow Awareness Month to increase the numbers of donors to save more lives like Brandon's. Now, therefore, be it, um, now, now, therefore, let it be known, I, Lisa L. Hebner, uh, first selectman of the town of Simsbury, do hereby proclaim November 2016 as National Bone Marrow Awareness Month. In witness thereof, I have placed my seal on the great seal of the town of Simsbury, dated the 14th day of November 2016. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sean. We also have a um, presentation by Mary Turner on an annual recycling award. Mary Turner, 11 Barnard Drive, Chairman of the Simsbury Recycling Committee. Since uh, 1966, uh, the George Hall Farm has provided our local community with locally grown, high quality, organic, and naturally grown produce. The farm became certified organic in 1979 and is certain, currently certified by Bay State Organic Certifiers of Massachusetts. The farm has incorporated composting to improve soil fertility while maintaining a sustainable, organic, and environmentally friendly method of agriculture. The farm is committed to expanding its use to compost and mulching techniques to improve the viability of the farm using locally available biomaterials. The farm offers community-supported agriculture shares a farm stand on the property, produce at many local farmers markets, and eggs and honey. Also offered are working farming internships, tours, and instruction for school, uh, for local school groups, and workshops for local residents. The Hall family has had a long history of farming in Simsbury. Farmer Darren Hall is continuing this tradition of a family-owned and operated certified organic farm serving our community. It is my pleasure to announce that the Recycling Committee has voted unanimously to present Simsbury Annual Recycling Award to the George Hall Farm as managed by Darren Hall. Unfortunately, Darren uh, has, it was unable to attend and Ashley Lane is here to accept on his behalf. Ashley. All right. I accept this on behalf of Darren Hall and all the Hall family members that are operating the farm in a sustainable and uh, 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 a sustainable way. Thank you very much. All right. Congratulations. Ashley, thank you, Mary. Thank you.
All right, with that, we will go on to um, first uh, selectman's report. Uh, the first selectman uh, for every meeting puts together a fairly extensive list of updates of activities that are going on in town. That is available on the website. I'm going to take no more than two minutes uh, to provide an overview of some of the key things that I saw. Um, the first thing I did do want to acknowledge is the reason that Mary, uh, that Lisa is not here tonight, as well as Tom Roy not being available, is they are at an awards ceremony with CCM for Tom receiving the Richard C. Lee Innovations Award. This is a significant award given by CCM. The Richard C. Lee Innovators Award is an individual award for municipal leaders who have developed unique and creative projects and programs to increase the effectiveness of local government. Uh, so please, when you see Tom Roy, congratulate him for that. Um, we're very proud to have a staff member of the town of Simsbury receiving this award. <laughs> Another update that I'd like to uh, actually ask Cheryl to give is there is a Community for Care presentation that's coming up um, tomorrow evening. Thank you, Chris. Um, tomorrow night um, at the library in the main program room, the Community for Care will present <coughs> a program entitled Talk Saves Lives, an Introduction to Suicide Prevention. The presentation will be given by a Simsbury resident, Thomas Steen. He is the executive director of the Capital Area, Su Area Substance Abuse Council. Um, we hope that the public will find this program informative. We are going to have a lot of information regarding signs, symptoms, and what a, the average community member can do to respond in a situation uh, where there might be a, um, a crisis. So we hope that you will be able to make it tomorrow night at the library at 6.30 p.m. If you have any questions, you can call Simsbury Social Services at 860-658-3283, or you can send an email to me through the town website. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks. One of the events that Lisa in particular wanted to make sure that we highlighted um, an appreciation of was uh, many of us had an opportunity to be at the Veterans Memorial opening yesterday. Uh, we want to, in particular, thank all of the individuals that participated in making that memorial happen, um, and also uh, appreciate all the members of the community who came. Uh, there were, I think, counted about 800 individuals that participated. Yep. And the ce ceremony is a culmination, really, of a five-year effort by local veterans, as well as Terry Hahn of Landscape Architectural Design Associates. The memorial honors 98 individuals who have um, passed in service since the Revolutionary War in Simsbury, as well as other um, living veterans. And if you haven't had a chance to get over there, uh, please do so. A couple other things I want to do is just welcome a new employee to the town, Adam Kessler, a project engineer. Uh, Adam is coming to the engineering depart department as the new project engineer. He's a professional engineer with over 10 years of consulting experience in land development, including site design, stormwater management, and permitting construction and inspection. And again, there's a whole host of other critical updates that you can see on the website if you want to check them out. So with that said, let's move to our first uh, item of action, uh, which is the approval of the uh, fiscal year 16 Board of Selectmen general fund budget transfer. <coughs> and Sean is here to speak to us. Um, what we, in essence, have tonight is the need for uh, two motions. One is for us to approve our uh, intra-departmental transfers, which per the charter we are accountable for. And then the second, after Sean's review, is to approve the inter-departmental transfers, which are actually, we're approving a recommendation to the Board of Finance. So with that said, Sean, if you want to take it over. Sure. Thank you, Chris. Um, uh, as uh, Chris was saying, what uh, you have before you um, are, uh, well, I, I should say, first and foremost, as we presented, I believe, about six weeks ago, uh, we gave you sort of an update on where fiscal 16 was closing out. Everything's tracking and tracked where we expected it. Um, and again, the good news on the expenditure side, we're favorable, uh, $64,593. Um, so that means under budget uh, on the expenditure side. Um, and again, as a reminder, on the revenue side, uh, we were favorable about 1. Uh, just under $1.4 million. 
Um, so all in all, good here. Um, <clears throat> what you have uh, for you, and this is the same format that's been used for the last couple of years, um, listing out of all of the line items, uh, as Chris was saying, ultimately the intra department transfers are what clean up individual departments. Um, any individual line item that's been overspent um, to balance it off with any favorable line items within that department. Um, to the extent not available, um, transfers between departments um, are authorized through the charter um, with the Board of Finance approval. Um, and so the summary on the last page of your attachment will show the inter-department transfers. Um, again, these are summing up from all the sort of multicolored sheets you have before you. Um, and the ins and outs, and then ultimately, as you'll see, I've, I've included a line this year that just shows the uh, amount returned to fund balance. Um, that doesn't actually take an action that would happen sort of either way, but that's just a good way to sort of account. So, um, and then the, the total there is $157,000 worth of inter-department transfers, and compared to the prior year, um, we were uh, more on budget than last year in terms of um, that, in terms of uh, 157,000 this year as compared to about 369,000 last year. Any questions? <clears throat> Any questions for Sean? I feel like everybody's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. All right. Looks good. Thanks, Sean. All right, so with that said, we need two motions. One is a general approval of the intra-departmental um, transfers as recommended by the Director of Finance, Treasurer. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All who approve say yes. Aye. 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 Any against say nay. So carries. The second motion we need is a recommendation consistent with the recommendations of the Director of Finance tonight to the Board of Finance for the inter um, departmental um, transfers. So moved. moved. Do you have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All who approve say aye. 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 Any against? The motion so carries. Thank you, Sean. We appreciate Sean. all of your work and effort you, on this. Thank you, Sean. Very well presented. Uh, the next agenda item is authorizing the first select woman to execute a dial ride. I'm sorry, we have the tax refunds. We can uh, so skip I need, those, but Colleen will come in here. So I need a motion to approve tax refunds uh, in the amount of $3,823.73. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All who approve say aye. 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 Any against? So carries. Thank you. Now we're on to the <laughs> authorize the first select woman to execute the dial ride operating assistance grant contract with the Greater Hartford Transit District in the amount of $6,517. Um, any questions on this? Is this managed by social services? It or is, yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep. Okay, that's yep. what I was thinking of. Any other questions? All right. I just need a motion to authorize the first selectman to sign the operating assistant grant contract between the Greater Hartford Transit District and the Town of Simsbury in the amount of $6,517. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All who approve say yes. Aye. 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 Any against? So carries. Now we are on to other business uh, appointments and resignations. Uh, we have uh, submitted to us, uh, acknowledge the resignation of Bruce H. Elliott as an alternate member of the Zoning Commission, effective November 20th, 2016. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Just a clarifying question, yep. Chris. We acknowledge resignations, but we can't stop them. That is correct. Correct. We are just, we are just, we just as we've done in the past, we can acknowledge them. So. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We acknowledge them with our thanks. Yes. Of course. Yep. Thank you. Any further discussion? Nope. All who approve say yes. Yes. Okay. Any against? So carried. Uh, the next is uh, appoint Joe Buddha as a regular member of the Tourism Committee with an expiration date of December 4th, 2017. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All who approve say yes. 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 Any yes. against? So moved. And uh, we have review of minutes. Uh, any questions, comments, suggested edits to our minutes? I didn't see anything. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> and so with that, we'll move on to uh, selectmen, liaison, and subcommittee reports. 
Uh, anyone have uh, any subcommittee updates that they'd like to do? Um, just a brief one from public building did sure. take up our charge um, from the last meeting regarding um, the new you know, so-called new <laughs> uh, plan and they have referred it out to an architect who specializes in the renovation of historical buildings so we are looking forward to um, hearing his recommendations and um, you know he is currently working with the state historical society on a couple of other buildings in the state so we are hopeful that with his experience and knowledge he'll be able to to guide us through this this process that we're starting thank you okay. um, I'll add from tourism, everybody knows Thanksgiving is soon upon us and will occur before our next meeting, um, which includes Simsbury Celebrates, of course, but also the beginning of holiday shopping. Main Street is yet again doing a big initiative with local small businesses and, of course, um, sorry, <laughs> Simsbury Celebrates will be uh, opening and including new features this year, including a European-style holiday market at the Historical Society. And Simsbury celebrates the actual dates, Elaine. We should Our we have them right here. They, they are Saturday after Thanksgiving, Saturday after Thanksgiving right. and I'm. I believe it's the 26th. It is. Yeah, it yeah. is. Saturday, November 26th. It is. So. Yeah. So it's a great event. So please. Great, great fun and yeah. um, small business Saturday will be on the 26th as well. But um, the Black Friday event that Main Street is sponsoring is part of making Small Business Saturday to a two-day event because we have so many great small businesses. So Absolutely. That's great. Anything else, Elaine? Nope. That's all I've got. Uh, I have one, yep, Chris. Mike. The uh, Clean Energy Task Force met. Um, we had given them, a, for lack of a better term, a charge to look at the streetlights, which the town is in the process of purchasing, and they've come back with a recommendation of recommending that we use 3,000-watt LED lights for the purchase and it's supposed to happen sometime this month but they're kind of coordinating right with CLMP or Eversource to buy the street lights and, and manage that process which okay. will ultimately be a good thing for the town on many levels both safety wise with brighter lights and uh, more um, focused light down so less uh, night light so to speak all right so, very good thing. thank you great. anything else we have our annual event of tri-board meeting tomorrow right so from we the do. board of finance side so there'll be more to update everybody on after we <coughs> get our guidance officially from the board of finance right. as we enter my favorite time of year budget <laughs> season so, um, so there'll be more of an update uh, after that but just again if folks are interested uh, that'll be at the library as well i believe right uh, no it's uh, here uh, at it's the board of right. excuse me yeah i was board gonna say oh i have board of ed room on my calendar right. <laughs> so yeah we'll be here for that one all right with that, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All approved. Oh, aye. 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 There we are. Thank you, everyone. No. Somebody text Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> you get a big pat on the back for that one. <laughs> well. Because I had my meeting scheduled first. We meet with the board of finance.